All right, what I'm doing is I'm gathering all my horse anatomy pictures or printouts that I've made, and I'm putting them in a folder so that I can find them what I need easily. And uh, I'm just taking some stuff out of these uh, clear uh, page holders, or what do you want to call them, file holders, so that I can put these uh, drawings that I've been able to get out of books and off of the internet into one place. And I'm not searching every time I have to do a sculpture of a horse. Doing this sort of uh, uh, notebook type thing with anatomy drawings of a particular subject or whatever is very handy and it's something that would be good for you to do uh, for your own self. Well, it took me all day yesterday to go through and get everything organized for my folder. But uh, what I did was I took uh, pictures from a book and I scanned them and printed them out. And then I reversed the photograph so that it would give me a view from the other side of the horse. So when you're working on one side of the horse, you got everything coordinated with that side of the horse that you're working on. So it's, it keeps confusion down. And then I've got the shoulder detail and... Uh, the chest detail, the rear detail, up and below. So that's my folder. It always helps to have as much material as you can find for your reference while you're working on something. And, and uh, it never ha hurts to have more than you possibly could want to need. All right, I'm going to work on the uh, chest. And what I've done is I've tilted the whole horse forward a little bit. And I've done the same thing with the uh, maquette so I can see the muscles a little more clearly. Now, this muscle is going to be stretched a little bit more because of the position of the uh, front leg of the horse.
The neck of a horse is a lot like a human neck. It's just stretched longer. The breastbone is right there, and that's where the uh, <coughs> major muscles of the uh, neck of the horse connect. Just remember when you're sculpting any kind of figure, for every action there's a reaction. And that in includes muscles and bone and joints, everything. When a horse or a human does something, muscles change their shapes and uh, muscles that control get larger and muscles that don't get smaller because they relax and they tense All right, that's going to have to be it. As you can see, I put a board under the base of the uh, horse so that I could tilt it up, and then I put two screws in it to keep him in place so I could tilt him more towards my face. Um, because it was in the angle it was, it was way up and pointing up towards the ceiling, so it was hard to see what I was working on. That's going to have to do it for today. I'll come back tomorrow and work on it some more. And uh, going to work on the face of the horse. And uh, once I get that, then I'll start doing the front legs. And then I'll uh, work on the mane and the tail. And I'm not sure I'm going to work on the mane and the tail while it's separated from the other horse. Because I've got to have it flow with the action between the two horses. And uh, I might have to wait until I put it back together after I get the other horse done as well. All right, everybody. Have a great night. I'll see you uh, manana. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. It really would help me. Also, check out the link below this video. It will take you to a review of my nine instructional videos that could be very helpful to you if you're thinking of sculpting. Good night, everybody.